A.A. Ron. Yeah. Why didn't you say it the first time I said A.A. Ron? Because it's pronounced Aaron. You done messed up, A.A. Ron! A.A. Ron is present. I'm here with my good friend, Andrew Gold. How's it going, Andrew? Great. Always lovely to see that lovely, slightly redder than mine face. <laughs> I've been getting a lot of sun lately, too, so it just gets redder and redder and redder. Um, so people have been really excited about the interview that you did with Scientologist and Playmate, uh, Miss like April 2021 or something. I don't want to get it wrong. Katie Lohman. And I did a reaction video to your interview, but I'd love to just sort of pick your brain a little bit uh about it and and for you guys in the chat um uh normally i would save the super chats until the end of the body of the video but if you guys have super chats like specifically on the subject uh we'd be happy to take them up here while we're doing this the, our chat so um <clears throat> so okay the most remarkable thing uh, th my, one of the most remarkable takeaways from that interview is how she believes tom cruise visited her in her dreams and personally recruited her into Scientology. Did you know she was going to say that when you agreed to do this interview? <laughs> no, I had I had no idea about that. So when that started happening, and you know, like I like to focus on some of the Tom Cruise stuff. So obviously when she started talking about that, I was like, oh my, yeah, keep going, keep going. Um, but, but flabbergasted, she got in touch. I just pulled up the email now and just, I don't, I don't think she'll, she'll mind because there's nothing private or anything that really that she wrote. But, you know, hi, Andrew, I came across your YouTube channel and was curious if you'd like to interview me. I'm currently a Scientologist and would love to tell my story. I understand your channel is not a positive outlook on Scientology, but nevertheless, I would love to share my thoughts thank you for your time katie loman and there's a picture of her and stuff and um i i just thought like well first i thought it might be a prank or something and then i thought okay maybe this is the case and that brought me back to sort of the old documentary work i used to do because i used to interview people who were like on the other side and now on youtube and podcasting and stuff i tend to interview people who have escaped or who agree mostly with me so it was a lot of fun getting to have this back and forth with her um, and as you say yeah very early on it was like Tom Cruise uh, basically inducted me or came to get me in in my dream it's unclear if she really thinks uh, you know he did that through dream power or whether it's just I had this dream and that it was meant to be I mean what what's your take on that you're right in retrospect she was not clear on whether she thinks that's something Scientologists can do at the upper levels of the bridge, and therefore that is what Tom Cruise did. But she did in the interview say something like, you know, when I woke up the next morning, I tried to rack my brain on why I could have had the dream. It was, had I just seen a Tom Cruise movie or something, and, and I hadn't. And yet what's interesting is that since you did that interview, people have been sending me all sorts of clips of Katie doing various kinds of media over the past 20 years. She was on Howard Stern. Uh, and there's an interview of her on a red carpet gushing about Tom Cruise unprompted in an interview. And I'm like, oh, she has an infatuation with Tom Cruise. Yeah, quite possibly. Yeah, go and on. so, oh, but but your question to me was, d does she think Tom Cruise literally used his OT powers to visit her in a dream and recruiter, or was it one big giant coincidence? I'll tell you what, it didn't strike me like she was chalking it up as a coincidence. Yeah, is I mean, so so tell me, is that something uh, some Scientologists believe? Can can you traverse dreams? That's not supposed to be on, on that list of OT powers. Hmm. And but but and I and I said that in my reaction video to your interview and and even after I did that video I was like you know what I bet I could find you some Scientologists who who would think that you're supposed to be able to do that and and that really what you're doing is just telepathically communicating with the person and maybe the person is projecting that into their dream but I will tell you you're not supposed to be able to pull a Freddy Krueger and interact with people in their dreams you are supposed hmm. to be able to telepathically communicate with people uh the dream stuff is just it's a little crazy well so is telepathically communicating with people i i can see how that can go to the next in fact i'm more likely to believe that you can incept you know a thought into someone's dreams than you can do it when you're not dreaming telepathically because at least you're sort of in some sort of other state you know sure oh i i see what you're saying there yeah 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 um mm. but i'll tell you <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. Most of that interview, I could chalk it up to being like, you know, people believe crazy stuff and Scientologists believe crazy stuff. Once she started talking about scientists have started to question whether the earth is even 75 million years old, that I was like, oh, she's definitely getting a call 
if she wasn't getting a call from Scientology before she said stuff like that, now she's definitely getting it. Because before it might have been like, hey, look, don't talk about Scientology. You know, that's but now it's like now it would be like, hey, it's not your job. Like you're mm -hmm. the, you're out there saying some of the stupidest shit stuff that would make Scientologists cringe. That is not OK. You're bringing Scientology under, you know, uh, into disrepute. Um, what did you think when she started going off on that? Hmm. Well, well, what I would say, and I, because I've had a lot of emails, including one email, I can't say who it was from, but from from a very, very big celebrity who I didn't even know watches my stuff, so probably watches yours. I'll have to tell you about that later. I'm sorry, everyone. Uh, <laughs> who who said, "Isn't it wonderful that uh, that she was nice?" And why don't Scientology put a nice foot forward sometimes if they want to bring people in? And that's a that's an interesting point, isn't it? It's a very interesting point. And and I made that exact same point in the the response video I did to to your interview, is that we can make fun of her, we can tease her, we can, you know, ridicule her for this or that. She was exceedingly, I thought, genuine, sincere. Mm -hmm kind friendly and transparent now in some respects in the pr world you might say yeah a little too a little too transparent but i appreciate that and also in the yeah. in the podcasting universe that exists these days being a little too transparent is kind of uh of of a virtue i i mean it i like it yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we actually got to the truth. There wasn't all this hiding. We got what she believes. A lot of people, and I'm sure you've had the same, have emailed saying, oh, I bet she was really thinking this and she was lying about that um, and all these kinds of things. And I think I, I really, you know what? I could be wrong. You never know what people are really thinking and what they're doing. I don't think that was the case here. I think this is a really nice person and she showed a lack of empathy in certain respects when we talked about um, you know certain people being locked up and she was like, well, what did they do? But that's part of being brainwashed. Um, and we know that, you know, this is something I've had to remind myself of many times. You grew up in Scientology, so it's a little bit different. But some of the other people, did, did Chris Shelton, did he grow up in Scientology? Um, yes, even if not, uh, 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 at least from a young age. Right. Well, a lot, a lot of people who we talk to who are, you know, friends of us, they, they joined at a late age. You know, they chose to join and then they left. And they're not terrible. But John Atax, an example, he's great. I love talking to him. What a nice, lovely guy. But if I'd spoken to him during that sort of, you know, the years he was in Scientology, I'd have had very weird. I can't even imagine what he'd have been like. So I wanted to be really careful while talking to her and while disagreeing with her, not to put her into this binary thing of like, oh, you're an evil, stupid person. Because we work yeah. so hard to dispel that myth and say, no, well, anyone can go in. And then her mind is working overtime to make all of the stuff work in her mind. And obviously you know, from what you've told me, she got a lot of it wrong. Right. You know, I, I do like to, uh, I mean, it's, it, it's not true that you have to be stupid to get into a cult, but that doesn't mean there aren't people in the cult that aren't stupid. <laughs> yeah. And okay. So, okay. I do see a couple comments here. First of all, thank you. LK niche for the super sticker and Anthony Spurgeon. We did just touch on this a bit. Andrew, did you ever get the sense that she was straight up lying? Was there anything that she said that you thought she was making up? I think she was backed into a corner a little bit because uh, not that my knowledge is that extensive. And I think if I were alone, she might have been able to run circles around me. It's probably or possibly the reason she went for me rather than you or another former Scientologist, because I'm a journalist who who knows compared to the average person. I now know a, a, a bunch compared to the average person about Scientology, but compared to you guys, I don't. And compared to her, I don't. Um, but I had everybody in the in the chat just saying, well, that's not right. That's wrong. I had you in there. Oh, no, no, no. Has she got her grades? Has she got this or that? And I think she was sort of, I don't know what she was hoping for or expecting, but she was backed into this corner. So it's possible she was, uh, I can't think of specific moments, but it's possible just to get out of a corner. She might have just had to say whatever she really says. I don't think that she's the type of person who's deceptive. Uh, I spoke to her before the interview uh, for a little bit when we were trying to get her equipment working. We spoke for a few weeks. I even suggested which microphones and stuff because I wanted it to be, you know, good quality. Um, and she just, she always struck me as nice. Uh, spoke about her mum who was there helping her. Her mum knows a lot more about the internet than she does, so her mum was helping her. Um, and I said, well, is your mum a Scientologist? Oh, no, no, she doesn't. You know, and it just felt to me that this was quite a, a relatively sweet person who, again, I, you know, I, I will stress she did show a lack of empathy in some moments, um, who, who really 
appears to be a true believer. Yeah. What the was only your So the uh, when she said that she had no idea who I was, the only <laughs> reason I suspected at the time she was lying, but I don't anymore, is that I was thought to myself, you don't fall down the YouTube Scientology rabbit hole and only find Andrew Gold. <laughs> Yes. And, and I go, that's what didn't make sense to me. And then I, but then when I found out that she has this history of apparently sort of being infatuated with Tom Cruise, I was like, maybe she didn't fall down the Scientology rabbit hole. She fell down the Tom Cruise rabbit hole and she found your Scientology content. And I go, that makes a lot Ooh. of sense to me. That makes that's a lot of really, sense to me. That's really interesting. That's really interesting. Yeah. I, th I think that might have happened. You never know how somebody, you know, maybe she didn't even fall down a rabbit hole. Somebody said, hey, have you seen this video? And it happened to be one of mine. That You're right that that was the one moment where you go, oh, you know, yeah, it feels like she should know who you are. But I, what would she really have to, I, I get it. It's like a bit of a diss. Like, I don't even know who that is. That didn't chime for me with yeah. her personality. Apart from right. the moment when she did get a bit competitive about Nixium, that was a bit of a weird moment. Do you remember that? Remind, uh, rem remind me <laughs> about that part. It was just, uh, I, I'm still trying to remember it exactly because it was all like a blur now. It was such a weird, fun, I should say, you know, experience. And um, I mentioned Nixium, like, well, how, how do we know it's not like Nixium and there's this whole thing and, you know, when you get into DOS, which is the middle, you know, I won't say what that is because enough of you should know what's at the center of Nixium. And she was like, yeah, well, they're, they're the, you know, the way she spoke about it was that it was like they were competing and they were like, they're just a fake Scientology. We're the real deal. And it was said with like a twinkle in the eye. And it felt yeah. a bit like, is this your soccer team that you support? Like Scientology is your soccer team and you're, you're going to beat Nixium at the... It, it felt like, well, ha is this a belief system or is it like a soccer team? Like, what is it to you? you know? I felt the same way a little bit when um, uh, Alexander, um, Apostate Alex, mm -hmm. asked her to comment on him being locked in a room by an ethics officer. She had that little glint in her eye when she's like, well, what did you actually do? What was your out ethics? And she was like, people who'll know will know. And I'm like, what What the heck? Like, she almost took some glee in applying this Scientology concept that's a very, um, uh, it's a very lack of compassion type of Scientology yes. concept. And uh, anyway, not, not, not a competitive against Nexium issue, but sort of that almost like no, rooting course, for yeah. her team. This is what my team believes. What did you actually do? Um, yeah. That, it that was, was the true. All. The true colors came out. The determined. I should just. I'll just quickly say. I, I met with Alex yesterday, and we spoke about that, and we came to the conclusion. I think that. Well, look. You know, it doesn't necessarily. Okay, for us on the outside, that looks like a huge lack of empathy. It's somebody saying, "Hey, I was locked in a room," and her response, and it almost sounded like a horror movie because she looks at the camera like, "Well, what did he do?" <laughs> and you know. You know, what depends what he did. And it really was quite, it's quite, ooh, oh, okay, that's the real her. Is that what's simmering underneath? But then, look, if you believe that much in Scientology, if you believe that much, then you your mind would go there. Like, what did they do to disrupt this thing that is the good thing, which is Scientology, to be locked in a room? So, right. yeah, complicated. Okay, here's another one that, again, we um, kind of accidentally already answered. Andrew, you did great at not laughing. <laughs> do you think she really didn't know who Aaron was? <laughs> they're not laughing i think i did laugh a lot and and that's i'll just quickly you know that's my style i suppose with um whenever i've had to or in documentaries that i used to make and i'm dealing with somebody who is an extremist or, or whatever it might be i do i i just i don't want to do that thing where i'm pretending like just nodding along i'm just going to be really open and honest like come on and laugh with them because I don't like that laughing at someone. So I'm laughing with them while disagreeing because I want them to come along with me on this sort of ride of, we're not going to get angry at each other here, but I think you're talking utter nonsense. I thought you did great at that. As soon as she mentioned that Scientology had made her a better driver, you were like, Katie, no, it didn't. Come on. You know it didn't. <laughs> right. You see what I mean? It's, but it's non-confrontational. It's not me going, Katie, what do you mean? You, you know, it, or it's, it's, it's bringing her with me and inviting her to laugh at herself a little bit. I hope that. I hope that's how it came across. Yeah. Have you spoken to her since the interview? No. Uh, I don't think so. Should I just uh, let me check my email because I forget you and I do this job and it is just relentless and you're just constantly right now. There's no emails between us since the interview. So so no, we spoke afterwards, you know, once we went off air. 
and we, look, I've got a duty of care. It doesn't it doesn't matter if they're a Scientologist or whatever they might be. I have I it's just I feel that anyway. We all do. Uh, you don't want to to have that and go. Okay, well, thanks, bye bye. And maybe they didn't realize the extent of the humiliation or what they've really just done. Maybe she's getting you know. And then they might you know if we get really dark, do something to themselves. You know. So I just wanted to make sure she was okay afterwards and said, you know, how are you? Are you okay? Was that okay for you? She says like, oh yeah, and she's smiling and stuff. There were a couple of moments where I sensed a little bit of emotion and, and a crack of the voice. And mm. that worried me a bit because yeah, you don't want to just leave someone after that. Uh, and I said, you know, you're here, you've got your mum around with you at the moment, you know, go say hello to her from me. And it was fine. And that's how we left it. Uh, I'd always be happy to talk to her again. I would love to talk to her at a point when she comes back and says, I've left. And that would be a great story to break. I, I predict that will happen. That's my guess. Oh, um, interesting. I don't think by the end of that interview, she would have thought it went poorly. I, I think that she would have guessed that she handled your questions and the issues that you raised as good as she possibly could have. And other than the stuff she said about the dinosaurs and the age of the earth, I might argue that she did. I mean, some of the things could have been handled a little better, like the, what did you do? Like, that's fine. But, 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 but in her mind, she was just being honest. I don't think she would reflect back on that and be like, Oh no, I shouldn't have said that. So, um, yeah. you know, that's interesting though, that she hasn't been in touch with you. I kind of would have guessed that she would have been, uh, mm. let's see LK niche again. My jaw just dropped at the things she was saying, especially the dream. Thank you, LK niche. And then another one from Anthony, does Scientology give any significance to dreams? Zero zero mm. just thetans entertaining themselves while the body is resting um maxwell edison's mom i saw on her instagram page that she is in dallas oh well that's interesting because she doesn't live in dallas no, i'm wondering if she, i'm wondering yeah. if she's getting her inevitable sec check that is not out of the realm of possibility oh oh she's there like temporarily i thought i thought maxwell meant like she's there she lives there Oh, well, who knows what she's doing? No, uh, the reason this would be relevant here is because Dallas is the closest Scientology org to her. Oh, uh, that's really interesting. It's okay. one of the reasons I was questioning why is she going to Tampa to do the student hat course when her closest org is Dallas? Okay, um, okay Ken's channel. A Aaron has the email, but I happened to check Katie's IMDb a few days later, and Katie uploaded a photo of her interview to IMDb profile so some, some people were questioning in my stream whether she was really just doing it all for publicity. Um, uh, again, like this is this is like, you know, internet sleuths and, and that might be right. Um, she was she had a makeup of a person and look, she's somebody who obviously cares about her looks uh, because she was a playmate. Uh, that's that's just a fact. So it might be the PR, but I believe and Ken, let me know if I'm wrong here. That picture doesn't have me in it. I don't think it's just her getting ready behind the scenes. So I don't think that is necessarily an example of her. And I, I do apologize if I'm not, I'm, I'm a little reluctant to sort of jump on her because I feel like we, I, and I worry that we've humiliated her and she might not realize it yet. You're right. And I guess our job isn't to humiliate. It's to sort of educate in a sense and for yeah. us to all see what, what a current Scientologist is really thinking. Isn't that fascinating? An, an, an unfortunate result of that is she's going to be humiliated because it's ridiculous all the stuff she said. But, you know. <laughs> yeah, so there's the downside of, look, if she's going to suffer all these social whatever, or online consequences for having done the interview, nobody else will want to do one. But it brings us back to the point. One of the things that's so remarkable about her having done it is they're not supposed to. <laughs> yes. I, I didn't realize what a big thing this was. And like a few former, you know, a few of the guys like you guys told me, like, this is unheard of almost. You don't get interviews with Scientologists about Scientology anymore. I yeah. didn't even realize that till I was about to speak to her. And as you remember, I was messaging you going like, is she the real deal? And you, you were getting me, you were saying, well, ask her about this. Does she have this? Does she have that? And I was like asking her and she, she was sort of providing evidence. And it was like, oh, this is quite a big this is yeah. quite a big thing. It was, it was good fun. Andrew, there was something that she said uh, that made me think there was a little something actually going on behind the scenes, which is when you did mention me or you mentioned who I am, she very quickly jumped into something I thought only a Scientology propaganda person would say, which is something like, well, what if you're the only one I want to talk to and you're nice to me? And I'm like, but if she doesn't know who I am, why does she have this idea I would not be nice 
to her. Uh, but I, I don't want to read too much into it. No, but, it's true. That's a good but remember point. when she was like, but what if you're the only one I wanted to do? I was like, eh, that didn't come across um, totally natural. But um, OK, yeah. an, another one here. We keep accidentally answering all of these, which is good. Uh, have you been in touch with Katie since the interview? I'm wondering if anything happened because of it. So, Andrew, if she reached out to you and said, hey, I've left Scientology. I want to revisit the subject. Let's do an interview. You would do it, right? Yeah, I would definitely do that, uh, especially if she's left. I'm not sure I would necessarily do one. Uh, again right now it the funny thing is it didn't get or hasn't so far gotten that many views on my channel compared to most stuff i could put out of you know a typical video i do with you might get 50 60 100 000 views i think it's on like twenty thousand, but it also has the most comments like per view that i've ever had and i'm trying to I and mean, this is more of a youtube thing than a scientology thing but i'm wondering if it's to do with retention and because youtube spreads your stuff out more if people watch till the end and maybe an hour and 15 minutes of me going katie come on and her going well i, I think i can drive better come on for an hour and a half it's a bit much and maybe that's why the retention was a little low was the retention low it was a tiny bit low i, I don't right. or, or my, maybe the other thing is like when people and this is a problem with youtube is a problem with the internet is that when people People are shown stuff they agree with already, whether it be politically, religious, whatever it is, uh, and that spreads. And it tends to be that when I have a guest on that everybody agrees with, it's like they agree share. Everyone's like, oh, you got to watch this. Oh, I love I agree this, with this person. When they don't agree with the person, as they obviously didn't with Katie, uh, it doesn't spread as far. But I'm still very proud mm. of that interview. So, so, yeah, I would definitely have her on again, particularly if her circumstances change. Nice. Would you have her on? 100%. I'd have her on uh, in any circumstances. I'll Do you want to, why don't you email any, her? What's that? Email her. Oh yeah, send me her email. I'll, I'll email her. Um, <laughs> any Scientologist, any Scientologist is welcome on my channel. Even if you want to come on my channel just to prove that I'm lying when I say Scientologist can't come on my channel, uh, I'll have you on anyway. <laughs> we'll, we'll have fun with it. <laughs> I think that would be a, um, great. All right, Scott says, I don't get her infatuation. Tom Cruise is not as hot as Grant Cardone. Mm. Uh, yeah, and I think Tom's probably even shorter than Grant. So I don't know. Tom, Tom's got a lot of things working in his favor. I don't, I don't blame anyone for being infatuated with Tom. Um, yeah. uh, Jason Polycron, AA Ron, always great hearing from you. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, Cassie Isaac, she speaks about Tom as if she actually knows him. Yeah, when she said, I hope Tom doesn't get upset, I'm going to say this, but I hope he doesn't get upset. I'm like, mm. what are you talking about? Um, I imagine Scientology would be a bit weary of that, at least when and if she comes down to Florida. Mm. Andrew looking extra dapper today. Hashtag black shirt crew represents. Oh, yeah. Got it going <laughs> on. That's the beard. I imagine they mean wary um, or oh. weary. I suppose weary and wary. No, yeah, you're right. Wary makes more sense there. They would definitely not let her in the same room as Tom Cruise. After, after saying, after she has told the internet <laughs> that Tom came to her dreams to recruit her, they'd be like, this woman's not allowed at any event Tom Cruise is at. And that, that's for real. That's for real. But it's, it's a fascinating point, though, because they searched far and wide, obviously, this is now some years ago, for the perfect wife for him. And they had to go outside of Scientology to get Katie Holmes because yeah. um, uh, Nazanin Bonyadi, that didn't work. She had to clean a bathroom with a toothbrush. So, I mean, I, I, I can't remember when Katie joined, but she would have been, she was a younger playmate. Maybe that wasn't exactly right for Tom Cruise's career at that time. Tom won't touch anyone who has a history in the adult entertainment uh, industry. There you go. He looks down on that very much. Other people might uh, consider it a, a feature, not a bug. Um <laughs> Courtney Shaw, hi guys, love you all so much. So do we know if Katie also looks for lost earrings? Isn't that a Scientology no-no? Sending love from Columbus, Ohio. I, oh, do you mean does she have a just for your fans? I doubt it. I very much doubt it. And if she did, I'd be happy to promote it. I don't want Scientologists saying that I don't do anything for them. Um, <laughs> the lost earrings thing, it was, I always forget what that is in reference. It's, it's to do with down the sofa. It's, I won't go into it, but I, I, Tampa, I it's a, T Tampa Brad, Tampa Brad and his wife um, make some money online looking for earrings in the couch cushions. She oh, loses man. them. He helps her find them from behind. Okay. Um, Kitty and Lou, you both, and I'm that person. Andrew, you look so similar to TC. Yes, we've always said that Andrew is TC's doppelganger. He's just like six feet taller than Tom Cruise. 
Yeah. Um, I think that's why she did the interview. Oh, do you think? Okay, so you look similar to TC and flirty AF. Um, think that's why she did the interview. People keep telling me that they think she was trying to flirt uh, her way or flirt you into Scientology. Uh, do you think mm. she's probably just flirty? The um, the famous person that I told you about who who uh, mm. was watching that also said that like uh, oh, that she, wow. was, she was flirting. It is an interesting thing again, just to go back to that dynamic between interviewer interviewee. You know, if if anyone's a fan of Louis Theroux or Louis Theroux, uh, you can see how he interacts. It is often very different with the women. Uh, and especially sort of a, a slightly older woman than him. And there is that weird dynamic sometimes, and then we get into laughing, and people might see it that way. Uh, I, I don't know. I've t I'm told I've got a tiny bit of Tom, Tom Cruise look, especially when I wear that stupid jumper, which I, um, I actually, ha people have been asking where that is. I had to give it back because it, it got holes in it and uh, I sent it back and they, they, they gave me my money back. So that's something. Um, but yes, I'm significantly taller than him and significantly uh, wealthier than him as well. He wishes he had my money. And uh, <laughs> that's all I have to say about Tom Cruise. <laughs> Do you know for what it's worth? And I guess this is just a personality thing. I didn't think she was being flirty. I thought mm. she was being perfectly friendly and pleasant, but people often think that I'm being flirty and I'm just trying to be friendly and pleasant. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Are um, you speaking to us or to your your family at the moment when you say this? To my family? Are you speaking like through <laughs> through the like to the? It sounds like you've been in trouble. Oh no 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 no! Just no, well, no, okay, no. especially with guys. Like gay people think I'm gay all the time because I'm just really friendly to them, and I'm like, "What do you want me to do? Be a dick?" Like I'm like as as friendly and effusive as I am on camera. This is how yeah. I am in real life to everyone, and I just yeah, sort you don't of have to sleep with them. <laughs> <laughs> it's not mandatory, Aaron. Wait, by the way, everyone keeps saying, "Why does Andrew say Aaron?" But it's not Aaron, is it? Well, British people say. The way you say it, Aaron. I used to say Aaron, like Aaron Carter, but I thought I kept hearing Aaron about you, so I've been saying Aaron. Oh, I mean, it's spelled A A R O N. I say no, Aaron. I say Aaron because yeah. No matter how it's spelled, whether it's E R I N or double A R O N, I pronounce it Aaron. Aaron, not Aaron. Isn't that what I'm or, saying? I don't know. You're British. Aaron. I can't. I don't know what you're saying. Aaron. Aaron. <laughs> every, every night <laughs> over I don't and over want people saying, I... Aaron. my mom goes Aaron I don't want you know, uh, people name. call me Adam it's Adam my name <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what people call me hey people call me Adam as well okay yeah. let's see He's another one this. here from LK niche do you think she'll be scrubbing Tom Cruise's bathroom with a toothbrush anytime soon if she's watching I can give her some advice use his personal toothbrush and then put it back <laughs> thank you LK niche <laughs> great I don't does think Tom Cruise see people now. Like, does he date people? Yeah, I have to assume that he does. Um, sure, I, you have doors. to assume that he does, right? I don't sure. know. Sure. I, I mean, he can't just be wanking it every night. Okay, <laughs> Denver <laughs> Stevo. <laughs> no, no, they don't. I think that's <laughs> we're okay. Denver Stevo, Andrew, fantastic interview. Trying to be nice here, but I got the impression that was turning on this sexy to make you sympathetic to her cause did you get the same impression see we're, <laughs> they're asking all the great questions that we're discussing mm, i think uh, De De denver stevo just finds her sexy that's just how she is it's her it's her you know it's important to her her looks and stuff isn't it yeah totally true and did you know that she'd done like stern and everything in the past that she actually has you know she's done a lot of high profile media interviews did you know that before you no, what's i don't even know what stern is howard stern oh her, howard stern she's she's been on howard stern 20 yeah 20 years ago she was on howard stern looking 20 she's, years younger she's, she's really gone downhill if she's talking to me now <laughs> <laughs> but like i mean i'd be intimidated as hell going on to howard stern and she was oh, cool yeah. as a cucumber but um uh hmm. I'll, I'll send you the video that's cool yeah okay john atack i think he's a wonderful source of knowledge and experience i read him a hundred percent and only found him a year ago please have him on soon oh i've done i've done an interview with john atack i had him on my channel and he and i was on his channel as well have you ever problem, interviewed him yeah the problem with with john atack and there's no problem with him because he's great but the problem is i get the impression he he doesn't wish to really talk and go into the weeds with regard to scientology anymore i think he's he's got so many I, I mean he is a source of knowledge it's just if i keep if you keep doing podcasts with him you talk about this and that and it moves back and forward which i think is great for an audio podcast uh i think youtubers you know it's, it's a little bit difficult because it's it's going everywhere 
Um, but what a fascinating guy. I just emailed him a few nights ago. Um, just sent him a quick message. What like to say? What what was it called when you can't when you can't sleep? And he says it's eveningness. It's this term he's got. And I sent him that at like four in the morning, and he replied immediately because neither of us could sleep. Both got <laughs> eveningness. But a fascinating source of knowledge. Yeah, great guy. Wow. I mean, he's been doing a lot of Scientology content. He's got. Um, oh. He just interviewed Mike Rinder. He's got his own YouTube channel. You know that, right? So maybe he's, yeah, yeah. But he, for, for years, he was always, and whenever I asked him, he was like, well, we can mention some of this stuff, but I really want to, you know, we end up talking about like bands from the 80s and like people I've not heard of. Like, Oh, Jeff is that Beck right? Or, yeah, he got angry. Or not, he got a joke angry that I didn't know who Jeff Beck is. He, he's fascinating. And the audio podcast, people love him. People are going like, oh, get John Atap back on again. Loved that episode. The YouTube videos don't do quite as well because, because yeah, I, I, he doesn't always want to go into Scientology, but it might be that he's, he's back into talking about it. I don't know. Interesting. Okay. We're almost done here. Um, Kelly Momsen, Kelly Momsen. I couldn't believe she actually did the interview. You two are so great. Keep it up. Well, thank you very much. Dave Owens, I would really love to see a follow-up interview. Yeah. I mean, I, I hope you're the first place she stops when she leaves Scientology because that would be I hope so. Uh, absolutely amazing. Um, hey guys, I just discovered both of your channels through what the it's got to be the. oh the last podcast on the left did a couple episodes on scientology um haven't stopped watching since great content you know a lot of people message me about that episode i mean uh i've heard of them i've i just there's only so many podcasts i can watch so i can't say that I've i wasn't listened mentioned to on that was i maybe they mentioned you and then it went to through you they they you did know. mention me i think they mentioned mike rinder um but i didn't listen to the whole thing i just got messages about it yeah former site we were talking about former scientologists mike rinder erin smith levin and some guy called andrew as well we mentioned <laughs> for no reason uh speaking of tampa brad where is the new reaction video yeah um uh, uh, tampa brad i'll get to tampa brad eventually he's not very high on my list honestly my videos about tampa brad just don't do very well so it's like why yeah. bother screw tampa brad um any stories about the anchorage mission nope never been to anchorage don't know anything about the anchorage mission hmm. uh marilyn honig hi guys huge fan of you both couldn't believe it when katie said if scientology was a cult she wouldn't care uh she may now care she may care now that osa has seen it yeah that's yeah, true yeah. um good point let's disagree and share oh what oh they're talking about your video and its performance i guess um p.s tom cruise is awful and cannot act andrew you are 150 percent better looking more what's carl barat um i don't know no not ringing any bells maybe it's somebody called carl barat let me have a look <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing Carl barat Okay, good. Yeah, we fin uh, Okay, well, he's relatively <laughs> handsome. Um, All there right, you go. I'll take that. But you guys in the chat from the Libertines. He's the guy from the Libertines. He's the guy with, with Pete Doherty. Who I don't know if they're famous in America, but yeah, I'll take it. Okay, excellent. All right, everybody. Well, thank you for joining us. I told Andrew I wanted to keep this to about thirty minutes, and we have done just that. Yet another successful interview. Hey, anyone watching this video, if you had not already subscribed to Andrew Gold's fantastic channel. You can find it under Andrew Gold, Andrew Gold 1, I think. He's now the Andrew Gold. There are more than one on YouTube, but he is the Andrew Gold. Um, all right, everybody. Thanks for hanging in there with us, and uh, much more to come today. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see a, a different one of my videos, uh, oh, you can't keep on then you could click right inside here if you have subscribed or not subscribe right here Bye.